even if you have a staff. <laughs> okay, we do. I see our first applicant is on our list of attendees here, so okay. anytime you're ready. Okay, we'll call this meeting to order. And I'll ask the uh, board members that were present to review the uh, minutes of the June 24th meeting and uh, make a decision. I have nothing to say about it because I wasn't here. Tim, are you there? Yes. Okay, we can hear you just fine. Uh, the board just goes through the uh, the minutes of the prior meeting and we'll be with you momentarily. Okay. Good. Has everybody had a chance to read the minutes? Yes. Okay. I'm still, I'm sorry. That's okay. Very cool, man. That's okay. I see my name on there last, so I want to make sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, yes. I think it looks good to know you are three new merchants. Chance to read? We got a motion to approve. I'll make a, I'll make a motion to approve the June 24th uh, meeting's minutes. I'll second one. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? And I abstain because that wasn't me. Thank you, sir. Um, okay. So, we move on to the, the first appeal, which is appeal number um, 828, which is a request of Timothy Rich of 122 Fort Edward Road, Morrow, New York. 12828 for an airing variance pursuant to chapter 149, article 5, section 149 59A, and town law 267B. Applicant is proposing to construct a garage that will not meet the required side of the yard setback in an R3 1 and 2 family residential agricultural zoning district. This property is located in 64.2 11 town assessment. I understand Mr. Rich's. There, um, can you tell us what you're doing to summarize? Um, I'm just looking to build a personal garage. I just bought this house just over a year ago. Um, at my, I moved up here from Hoosick. Um, I originally grew up over in Hudson Falls, but I went down there for a while. And I had a garage down there about the same size. And uh, this was just the perfect piece of property that we loved. And I said, the only thing it's missing is a garage. And I said, no problem. I'll build one in the future and uh that's what i'm just trying to do i'm just uh you know i i do construction for a living um i just love working on my own vehicles i have a collection of trucks i got four of them <laughs> i got a couple old square bodies and a couple of newer ones just i don't believe in paying garages when i can do the work myself okay uh, <laughs> You know, just trying to build something I can work in, and oh, it's a it's a garage for your personal use. It's for your personal storage of your oh, personal absolutely. vehicle. Absolutely. Okay. okay. So yeah. I, it fits in with the uh, with the zoning there, as far as that goes. I I noticed you've got where there's a special use permit attached to this, but I think that's just kind of overkill. Is that right? Right. Okay. Um, so we're really not looking for a special use permit, we're just looking for an area. Correct. Yeah. And I, I think he indicated there's a septic system on the other side of the, the house um, on his map. Yeah, so my septic system is yeah not even 10 feet off the house on the other side. Plus I have a ravine with a mini brook running through it. On that side? Yeah, on the other side, on the same side as the septic system. Okay. It's actually... Um, it's an old military road, I was told. <laughs> they used to go down to the river or something. It goes all the way down back to the river. Neat. <laughs> um, so we're looking at, we're looking for a, a 9.2 foot variance, which is yeah. from the overhead, just so you understand, for the roof. Yes. 
And uh, just look at the staff notes here, it's, it's, um, it's a 46% relief from the, the setback. Um, and your, the land next to you, the, the property is, is not a, it's not a residential property. It's a, what does that mean? Land is a General Electric company, is that? Yes, there's 70 feet that they own that goes all the way back to the power lines. That separates me and my neighbor. And I have spoke to him and he said he had absolutely no problem with me building a garage. Do we have any correspondence on this? No, we, it was properly advertised when we received no correspondence. Um, I do have a couple of people on here uh, I can explore. You know, I see that um, I can find out if they're here for this hearing or not when, when you get when you open it. I have a Charlene and a Tim Barber, so. Let's look at the staff notes in terms of the um, the area variance requirements. It seems there's nothing, uh, you know, as far as uh, you, you want an attached garage, is that correct? Yes, I'm going to attach it right to my house. So you can't do that over your septic? No. no. So that's a strict application. Okay. Um, <clears throat> and, and it's a fairly large garage, a 32 by 32, I guess. It's not huge by any means. Um, but, it's, but cutting that down in size by nine feet would actually be quite small, I think. Well, we put trucks, he's using it for trucks. Um, I would say that, that that's why he wants to be. But. Yeah. Yeah. And there are trucks for personal use. Mm -hmm. so, I have, yes, I got a, you know, I got two lifted trucks. One sits on 44s and, you know, it's a mud truck. And then my other one is a daily driver, but that also sits on 37 inch tires. Mm -hmm. So they're fairly large trucks is why I'm looking to build such a big garage. Okay. Makes sense. Um, the, uh, that, that kind of answers the question of the strict application of dimensional requirements. I mean, the, the only way you can meet those dimensional requirements on that side of the building would be to reduce the width of the, of the uh, building by quite a bit, by, by nine and a half feet, I guess. Um, so um, that makes sense uh, to not do so, in my opinion. Um, and any board member that wishes to disagree or, or agree, whatever, speak up. So then that would be the first, first requirement. The second requirement is the question of how substantial the requested variance is in relation to the uh, requirements. And we've established it's about a 46% relief. Um, so that's, that's you know, our, our threshold has always been 50%, but, but um, this is below that, but still fairly substantial. Um, but none of this precludes granting this. Um, the next is that the difficulty cannot be alleviated by some practical method feasible for the applicant to pursue. Um, <clears throat> it sounds like even if you could, didn't want it attached, it would be hard to build anywhere else on the property, you know, reasonably. Um, is that true? Uh, yes. Okay. I, just the way the property is cut up, it's, that's the only logical space. Yeah. Um, the next is that there be no substantial change in the character of the neighborhood detriment to the returning properties. Um, I wasn't able to get down there because I wasn't, I didn't hit me until today that it was part of this was part of the, what we were looking at. But I don't, I think that neighborhood has all kinds of different buildings. And well, buildings. There's grass on most all the houses around. And big ones. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I think from what I can see. Um, so I don't think that would be a substantial it change. Look, I think it would look like everybody else's yard. Yes. Really. Yeah. Um, and uh, it, it would not be material detriment, material detriment to the purpose of this chapter of the property in the district in which the property is located with a description for the purpose of the district or objectives and any plan or policy. And I, I, again, I think that kind of is redundant with number four. I, just, I don't see a big difference. Okay, so we've covered that, and I think we can just kind of incorporate the findings of the staff with our motion if we decide to do that. 
Um, and I got all over the public hearing. Okay, uh, let me see here. There is a Charlene on. I, she's muted, and she needs to unmute herself if she wants to participate in this. Uh, Charlene, if you can hear that, you're muted. You need to unmute yourself. Um, Michael Close, are, are you here for this? Michael Close, you're also muted. If you could unmute yourself, if you would like to speak. Um, Mike Close is here. Can you hear me? Yeah, are you here for this application? Um, I'm well, I'm just listening to see how it goes for the, um, appeal number 830 with JAG. Okay, yeah, that, that's um, that's coming up later on. Yep, yep. So okay. I'm just here listening and just being prepared in case there's any questions that are necessary. All right, okay, thanks, Mike. We'll, we'll be with you in a little while. Uh, Charlene, Charlene, yes. are, you, are you here for this application? No, okay, I just wanted to be, be sure. Um, we'll, we'll be having the subsequent public hearings on the applications uh, that are following. And uh, our, our Richards, I believe, are you here for the, um, are you here for this application or are you here for another one? You're, you're muted as well if you could unmute yourself. Our Richards? So this is Mike Close. Our I'm here for another one also. Okay, I, I, I didn't recognize the name right off the top of my head. I just wanted to be sure. Thank you. Okay, so that, that's everybody. Um, yeah, so there's apparently nobody okay. on this here. Uh, for this so we'll close the public hearing. And we'll back down. This doesn't require a speaker. Correct. Okay. Um, any further discussion from the board? We have a motion. I'll make a motion. Okay. Uh, uh, number 828 that we uh, grant the uh, we, we requested uh, relief of 9.2 feet or 46% of the setback to the uh, eve, to the, uh, you know, so it's always to the eve of the, or not the eve, the, uh, you know what I'm saying. Good. 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 Yes, thank you. <laughs> I, couldn't, I, I didn't want to say the E, that's what that was wrong. The overhead. The overhead, thank you. The overhead. The overhead. The overhead. Yeah, the overhead. <laughs> and I think that it might be appropriate, typically with these, we like to have that, that distance verified at the point of the footing inspection. Yes as a condition to make sure that Absolutely. the building's not built and then we have an issue. So we definitely don't want to have a building say it's not. <laughs> right. So um, we would put a condition in that, that with the condition that it has to be inspected when the foundation is going to verify right. the drawings, then it will meet that set. Correct. Uh, can I say one thing? Yeah, go ahead. Then. Uh, the the overhangs are going to be going the same as my house, which will go front to back. So it's going to go straight up on that side. Okay. There won't be any. Right. Okay, it's yeah. all the better. Yeah, and can we just incorporate in the findings the uh, findings in the staff report? Yes, the, the, the findings of the staff report support what we're doing. Do the second. I'll, I'll second the motion. Any discussion? Can you pull the board, please? Yes. 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 Okay. Okay, Tim, you're you're approved. <coughs> okay, thank you very much, guys. Okay, thank you. Have a good evening. Take care. Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Next appeal is appeal number 829. Appeal of request to Donald J. Pittengill of 165 Mansfield, Queensbury, New York, 12804 for an area variance pursuant to Chapter 149, Article 5, Section 149 59A, and Town Law 267B. The applicant is proposing to expand top notch self storage by constructing a new 25 foot by 200 foot building that will not meet the required site setback in a C1 general commercial zone. The property is located at 50 1.1 3.1 on the town assessment map. 
Do we have Mr. Vittengill? Yes, Mr. Vittengill is here. Don, you on? Hello, Don? Yes, can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, uh, I'm looking to do a 25 by 200 foot building on the south side of Top Notch. Um, according to the elevation charts, if the, the top of the building proposed will be lower than the fence line. Uh, that borders the property with the Cardinelli's. So since the property is set down so low, same as the building where there's just doors on the um, facing north, so no doors facing south at all, and uh, be very kind of, and uh, basically wouldn't be moving any at all. It's just going to be placed on the existing gravel back there. Um, we've added two wells on each end already just to stay ahead of the um, stormwater management. So those are in and that'll carry any runoff. This facility was built purposely down below grade so we handle all of our runoff. Um, not a lot of uh, fact to anything really with it. It'll probably make it a little more private um, by blocking off the existing lights on the ends of the buildings on the south. So um, basically close out the construction project with this one last building. Same builder. Um, just like before. Um, just a special note, um, it is a asterisk in the uh, C1 use schedule that um, when uh, boundaries of a, a parcel in the C1 district that join a residentially zoned uh, property or district, um, the, the, set, the setback increases to 50 feet. So that's the, so the, the standard for which this is being, the release is being requested then is 50 feet. Now we've already had him in the floor. We came correct to add this section here. Right? Yeah, that happened. Uh, <laughs> recollection two or three years ago, I think. Yeah, no, yeah that's the one that's also drawn on. It's drawn on there, yeah. I think it's uh, indicated as building number five. That's right. the one that was recent was approved a couple of years ago. Wasn't that an issue about if this was considered a warehouse? Well, I. I've already looked at that as zoning administrator, and I, I don't consider this warehousing. Yeah. Um, this is this is residentially based self storage. It's, it's a it's a oh, different. No, I, I, I know that. And I do remember though when this came before us the first time, when it was first built, there was a lot of the neighbors did come that lived next door to here with, with a lot of concerns, that, and and it was that fifty foot was very important to them and. and uh, I want to make sure that we, we, we we're all aware of that because uh, I don't remember that meeting the same. Is that correct now? Yes. I don't want to give them the name, but yes. <laughs> and, 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 so I, I could, I they were actually here at the meeting. Yeah. And, and, and we're very concerned about us maintaining that 50 feet. Oh, this, this 50 feet? Yes. Talking about. No, I'm talking about originally. They were here for, for this in the beginning. We, 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 we've seen him this the third time. Okay. Do we have any comments from the neighbors? Nothing came in, no, but there, there, is, a, there is a Charlene on, um, and I, uh, I don't know if she's here for this hearing or not, but that's the only person we have on. He's looking at my wife, waiting to see what you do. Which is fine, baby. Uh, <laughs> well, that's not a bad thing. <laughs> it looks like you got a right home. <laughs> uh, what was this 50 feet specification again? There, there is the, the setback increases to 50 feet. Uh, for any parcel in the C1 zone, when that parcel adjoins a res residentially zoned parcel. And just across the boundary to the south here is an R1 district. 
So that, that's why the 50 feet uh, is invoked. And this be this is a residential well uh, as a storage building. Is there a category for that in our in our zone? Well, it's the infamous phrase in the C1 zone. You know, businesses subject to highway traffic or something to that effect that serves highway traffic. So that's been a large catch-all for a lot of users, oh, yeah. and we're going to fix that. You know, in the rewrite, but that's what, that's still what we have to work with. Because I do recall a, and, and this probably is not is not that relevant to this particular appeal, but I do recall a, a storage, this kind of facility where we kind of we looked at it as a warehouse, and and that was the closest we could get to, because I don't think in our law we have anything. Like these self storage. Yeah, yeah, I, I think yeah. I, I think our long three days. Yeah, it was. I, I do believe you're. I, I do remember something along that line. In in my mind, there's there's a lot of differences between this and a warehouse. Oh, yeah. a warehouse, oh, large, yeah. large, potentially semi, you know, trucks. Uh, um, you know, uh, bright lights. You know, twenty four hour service potentially. Not that it doesn't happen here, but that was a question I had for Don. You close us at night. Uh, it is open, but there is rarely anyone through there at night. Okay. Um, but this is small vehicle traffic yeah. and it obviously of a residential nature. So. And I think the issue is also having to do with like fire, whatever, the, the, the warehouse requires right. more space. It and and certainly what's being stored. Yeah. Whereas this is, you, you are restricting what's being stored in the buildings, am I correct? Mr. Bittengill? What was that? Do you restrict what, what people can store? Absolutely, it's per contract, so it's it's uh, clearly written in. On which side would they have access to the units? I, he said in his opening statement, it's a, it's a, the openings will only be towards the other building, the center of the contract, to the north. I'm sorry. <laughs> Doors only yeah, I didn't quite get what you said about the, the storage, though, the requirements. Yeah, you were breaking up a little bit, Diane. Could you repeat that? Yeah, um, the contents that are stored are definitely um, restricted per contract. So they come in and sign a contract and they say that nothing is going to be flammable, illegal, anything like that. And uh, but yeah, it is restricted. And I have a manager. I think we're losing again. You're comfortable with that turning radius at the end of those? You know, I mean, if you've got doors opening on this building, facing those buildings, and people are in there loading or unloading stuff out of that storage space, and somebody comes down that row and wants to turn, they're not going to yeah. do it. I got about 35 feet, it looks like, from the end of the thing. So, pretty much large, 28 foot. 30 foot box truck, they can make that turn for you. Well, so as long as nobody was parked in front of the storage area, moving stuff in and out. But if there was somebody diagonally parked in front there, I'm loaning something, they wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, our our um, buildings right now, the 21 feet wide. So that's plenty wide for two cars to go. Someone pulls tight to the building and anyone by design. Yeah. You really did break it up. Could you repeat that again, Don? You're breaking up again. Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, the, the distance between the north south buildings is uh, 20 feet. That's very similar to how the back line is going to be. If someone pulls their car close to their door, it allows for a car to pass by. They don't block alleyways. Right, but they're not turning. There's a, there's a difference when, when you're driving straight through or coming down here and have to turn. That's different. Yeah. Well, when they move in, I can brief them on how to park their vehicle and put it parallel to the building. Is this, this subject, is this subject to cycling? Yes. Okay. Has, and it hasn't been yet? No, it has, to, it has to be considered for the variance before it can go for cycling. <coughs> But I mean, the code either about you know, the screen here and the buildings, right? So we went through this. I mean, I'm facing that. You're looking at this. 
It's a relatively small building. We are low lying on buildings. The well kept business there in the corner is always, you know, a late time. I, I guess I'm trying to, other than the neighbor next door, the biggest problem in this one, really, but he also is still leaving, as you saw, 24 feet from me. It's another concern. So I'm just. Well, that's why I put in my notes. Uh, I, I realize there's a fence there, but, you know, in, in consideration of the 50 feet, if that is, if this is granted, then maybe a mitigating factor would be increased vegetation along that uh, boundary. What would be the boundary if it wasn't adjacent to a residential property? Um, yeah, I believe, believe it or not, I think we're just being a corner lot where co-reads, there's, there's uh, two fronts and two sides. We don't have a side, just be a side like that. So, I think C1 is only 20 feet. I don't know, I still have a little bit of No, I'm sorry, it's, it's 15. So it would only need to be 15 feet if it were a side setback. I just am still concerned with it. Let's say, heaven forbid, there was a fire. And people were there with their vehicles and a fire truck came down and get to that the end of that building. How would they do that? I mean, we always have to think about safety, about the vehicle. I mean, one of the things the fire department wants us to do is to make sure that they always have easy access. Well, the two reasons for the biggest conversation on there, they have full access coming down these runs. The biggest turn would be to actually can make that turn radius within the truck. And that 21 foot is a narrow hallway. You'd have to be coming down the Gantry roadside to come around. So we could also make that condition too as a site plan review. That would be one of their things they would be looking at, right? Fire truck access, big conversation. Yeah, they've been, uh, lately they've been asking for applicants to run their site plans by the fire department, yeah, uh, the fire chief. Yeah, that's common. That, 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 that would be smart because I, I don't, I think that's pretty, pretty, I just feel it's really tight. <laughs> There was an emergency access off of Gansville Road. Well, I don't think, it, well, that would be tough because we, he was required to put that berm in, and, and, and we required it. <coughs> so we'd be asking him to take out the berm, and then you have that other point of access that doesn't get yeah. gated, and then who's got the key open again? I know the fire department gets the okay, key, but I'm just saying that it opens up a lot of different issues. Yeah, we've been um, in business, well, 16 years there. Um, there have been any um, incidents, accidents, fires, uh, any theft, any, um, you know, you can what if whatever you want. Um, but yeah, the way we operate the place, the way we manage it, we keep hands on. And, uh, you know, you could say, what if a fire catches anywhere? I mean, I fly a triple seven for a living. I mean, what if the fire catches on the cargo over the North Pole, you know? So, I mean, it, it's, uh, it's a very low chance of happening. Could we, is it feasible for us to, if we approved it with the caveat that it had to run the fire department first? Sure. And, and if the fire department had no problem with the emergency access, that they didn't feel it was any concern, that it was fine? Yep. And if they did have a concern, <coughs> put the brakes on? Yep. Uh, or you could... Or, or you could, I, I, think, I think that I don't want to play with the fire department. I'm not. Or, or you could table it until such time you do hear from the fire department. Well, I... Yeah, I mean, whatever you think is best. But I, I, I would really feel a lot more comfortable. I don't pretend to be an expert on it, but when I look at that, I just feel like this. Well, I can tell you the, the, the planning board, I the other thing they, they are very prone to doing, I can't imagine they wouldn't do on this, given the uh, position of the building is they're going to have this templated, you know, for turning radiuses, you know, on a, on a manual, on a CAD machine. They're, they're going to check this for turning radiuses that the, the wheelbase of the fire truck will fit through these uh, dry bottles. So, you know, or if they don't, then the fire chief has got to say they have a, a safe and acceptable <coughs> method of fighting this fire, whether the trucks park in the street, they run the hoses, or, you know, I don't know. Right. I'm, I'm not a fireman either, but. No, I, I don't want to think, but I, I just, I'm just definitely comfortable with the, the, the proposal. I'll be honest with you, I, I look at this and I, I think to myself, well, okay, 
there are some issues, there are some real concerns in traffic and, and accessibility of people and all the rest of stuff into this property. And then I look at it and say, well, what is the hardship if we don't? What is, what is the, you know, why, why do you need a variance? What hardship do you, do you have by not being able to build this building? And I guess that's a question I have to ask you. I mean, you're, you're asking us to, this is a, a C1, and I have, you know, I, I, I think we can, we can look at the zoning and maybe it shouldn't all, maybe it should all be C1, I don't know. But, you know, but the point is, it's not. It's, it's a joining of a residential property. And, and we have, we have the, those folks that came to us when you first got another variance to say, we want that 15 foot maintained. Mm -hmm. and, I remember that meeting and why, why would we go change that now? What hardship do you experience from us that, if we didn't change that? Um, well, basically, I'm just trying to keep up with the demand that's out there. There's a lot of corruption, a lot of storage <coughs> or else to put this building. Um, and if someone had a, um, a negative input to this, meeting they should be here and voicing it um i think to use an input from a meeting that was three years ago is invalid i don't think so i don't agree with that i i, I don't know how the rest of the board have, have, have you spoken have you spoken to their neighbors well it's jim cardinale his best way to I know the two, but it's the Cardinalis. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why they did not. I I wasn't going to mention the eight. I was going to. You know, my theory was is that we did have to turn the board. But I I don't think it's even that as much as it is for me how how tight that's going to be. We we do have a couple of people on here. I don't know again the uh, uh, uh Charlene and then a, just a phone number and I don't know if they're here for this application or not. Before we open up to the public, uh, just curious, Mr. Vindingill, I mean, there is a concern with the neighbor. I tend to agree with your logic as far as we can't let one resident make decisions based on zoning code. So I understand that, but there is obviously legitimate concern to the detriment of the neighborhood. So we do have to talk about that. It's an important issue, um, something we talk about very heavily in this uh, room right here. So I guess uh, Mr. Martin proposed some possible vegetation screening, something to alleviate uh, that concern. Is there anything that you would be exploring that? Do you know what you'd be willing to do? Is there something you could, I mean, I don't know that a line of six foot armor bikes actually makes that better or worse. I mean, I'm just curious if you put any thought into that as to what you can do there. Yeah, arbor vitis grow great down in there. I have six that I planted probably five years ago. They gotta be 30 feet tall already. They're on that fence line. I could continue with those plantings and just do the whole southern end of the property. That would rip up for it. You know, like I said earlier, the top of this building is going to be below the existing plant <coughs> covered with vegetation already. But mm -hmm. I can Don, could you repeat that last couple sentences? Yeah, if uh, it helps, you know, at the, at, um, Order of the properties that would be helpful. I think we can make recommendations to the planning board for that. I think that's probably the best way to move. I think. Yeah, I think it's a similar thing. Those are two issues. I think if we can get the fire water rectified fairly, you know, judiciously. That's kind of a, it is what it is, right? The other question of whether it's a detriment to the neighborhood is the more. Uh, more critical factor right now in my view. Um, I didn't know what you guys are saying on that. Mr. Bittengill, have you spoken to neighbors about this proposal? I haven't. Um, since Jim passed, I know people are pretty busy with a shit. Right. I mean, that would be... They don't have a real concern. They, they never expressed it to me. Um, you know, they don't have issues with them. We've been... Uh, Understood. Understood. Work. <laughs> I guess my point is this actually make it more private for them. There is an argument to that. Right now you can see down the alley, you can see every single storage unit, every single truck, and every single person. 
once this goes up with a blank wall, they'll no longer be able to see 87 storage units. They'll be able to see one clean steel wall. Mm -hmm. That's what they'll see. You add some vegetation to that beautification, there may be an argument there. I mean, it is in this building. The other thing I just wanted to double check, make sure I understand your notes. In the request here, you talk about side setbacks and everything else. It must be by scale or just mine, so it's not a good approach, obviously. But you mentioned the side setbacks of 33 feet to the east, 30 feet to the west. Looks like we're well beyond those distances, and then the 24 to the south. So because of the front and rear conversation in the C1, do we have any, are we just looking for relief on the south setback line? Correct. Okay, so the rest of it's just supplemental info. All right. All right. So he's well beyond that limit though. He's 50, 60 feet from, from, the, from the east there. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, let's see. Uh, we have a Charlene on. Are you, are you here for this application? Charlene? And we have another person that's just showing up with a phone number. <coughs> I guess is a. Yes, go on. ahead. Uh, yes, please go ahead. I'm listening only. Okay, I understand. Uh, uh, Sh Charlene? Listening only. Okay, thank you. <laughs> okay, I, is that, okay. <laughs> okay, now then I won't beat that dead horse anymore. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so we have no public input, so we'll close the public hearing. Um, I think we've, we've discussed this as much as we're going to, as we need to. I don't believe we need a seeker on this, am I correct? Correct. Well, the applicant did fill one out, thank you. It's good to do it and be ready. Um, I guess at this point we'll entertain a motion. Anybody wishes to? Well, I don't know. I, I'm um, going to make a motion to approve it based on the, the caveat that, uh, that was when they go before the fire department for approval because they have no problems from a safety standpoint. And, uh, and then we recommend, and I don't know if it was anyway, then we recommend that there, uh, is there some added writing or something along that line added to that buffer uh, on the back side of the, the R1 zone and the C1 zone. I second. Okay. <coughs> Discussion. Um, I'm, I'm, I have to say, I tend to be opposed to granting this variance simply on the fact that I don't see where there's a, a hardship if, if every time somebody wants to add something to a commercial property or whatever in our town because they want to make more money, then we will never get stop well, taking these variants. Well, we'll never, we'll never maintain what the town's vision for the commercial properties is. Yeah. I, I, I understand that. In, in residential applications that we had, uh, we have, you know, you deduce that because of irregular lot, because that's certain conditions of the lot, would you, I mean, is there anything to say that because it happens to be adjacent to the residential where it's where there's causing the line, he's within his commercial boundaries, he's within oh, the C1 yeah. district. The only thing really throwing him off is there has to be a residence right next door and not two doors down. So that's kind of my question. Do we, do we encourage the William Street development that's already there, or do we try to are we limit to where it is right now and not let it grow any further? Well, I think it's, if I can just interject, I think that most of the times when we give a residential relief, it's usually an older home that is, was built prior to the zone and it doesn't meet the code. This was built from day one with, with the rules and he was only able to put, when he came before us the first time, he was only able to put the number of buildings you see with the lines through because the way the code was designed, that was it. He came before the zoning board and we gave him relief to add the building out on 32. Now he's coming before us to add the building back. And that's why I've had a lot of concerns. And that's why 
I question the, the fire safety and stuff. Because when he developed his building and developed his craft, he knew it was a setback for it. That's different than what. Very fair point. Yeah, those guys have no grandfather and no change. Very, very fair point. That's why I was asking the question. That's a very valid point. And I think that's why I'm wrestling with this so much. It'll be a me too because it's it's kind of like yeah okay we want to we want to encourage commercial. Well, I agree. But we also want to protect the residential property. And that's I do also feel very as far as you know the rules have to mean something, right? We create every variance every time, all the time. Why do we have the rules, right? So there is you know there's definitely some good logic on that side too. To, to, and again, we already have been leaning obviously we've already we've already read the variance in the past. <laughs> then what you said, in all honesty, he runs a beautiful business. This has nothing to do with any question about what kind of business he is or that we want him to be successful. What the question is, is are we doing what the town fathers really want as they're looking for, this is the way we want our town to look. This is what we allow. And when we make these variances and stuff, we change that. And that's my, that was my concern with the residential next door. Because that, that is the, again, I think logistically we can work out the fire trucks. You know, I think it's really tough for sure. He has to be But I don't know how we really suffice and satisfy the neighbor next door. You know, I mean, that's the difficult part. And the neighbor is not going to come. And the neighbor, the, the neighbor next door, that property, the owner has this best way. And if that property is put for sale, we have to also look at it from a yes. residential standpoint, does it impact the resale that property? You know, we have to think about that because we really need to protect the commercial people, but we need to protect the residential owners too. So it's a, it's a very difficult, it's, this isn't easy. So it looks easy on the drawing, but it's that easy. It's not, it's not any aspersions on your business, Mr. Mendoza. I agree with Kevin. We, have, we run a very clean and very, um, very good business. Um, the town is proud of it. Again, I, I, I just, just 50 feet for a commercial versus residential, to me, makes sense. It's a sensible. I think it was written for the purpose that it would keep undue noise and, and you know, issues like that in the name. It's a bump. It's a bump. It was written for this exact issue. This is the exact issue. So we do have a motion. Yeah, I made a motion. And yeah, but I have the same motion. So the answer is not even to the chairman, but what can I make on that motion? <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I was feeling that way. I'm feeling the thing that I... Do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the meeting of January 29, 2018? Second. 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 And just to, just to be to be to follow the format that I've tried to always follow, let's review the requirement for an area. So first is that a strict application of said dimensional requirements will result in a specified practical difficulty to the applicant. And again, that's you know, I understand the difficulty is that you're not maximizing the profit from your piece of property, but I'm not sure that's such an enormous detriment. Um, the next is how substantial requested area invariances in relation to the requirements. It's a 52% relief. That's so it's pretty substantial. Um, anything over 50% we have tended not to give. Um, <coughs> the next, if you want to speak, I'll, I'll be glad to entertain you. Mr. Vendigo? Go ahead. I think we'll just oh, go on. Okay. That the, diff the third requirement to grant an area variance is that the difficulty cannot be alleviated by some practical method feasible for the applicant to pursue. And the practical method in this case would be to not build that next building. The fourth is that there will be no substantial change in the character of the neighborhood or detriment to adjoining properties. And I think this is where we get into that 50 foot setback. Uh, and, and I don't. We only really see a whole justification for doing that. So that's, that's just my opinion. Anybody else, please speak up. <clears throat> the next is that the variance will not be material and detrimental to the purpose of the chapter or the property in the district in which the property is located or otherwise conflict with the description and purpose of the objectives of the plan of the town. And the variance is requested as a minimum variance which would alleviate specific practical difficulty found by the Zoning Board of Appeals to affect the applicant. 
<clears throat> it, it is the minimum variance if you want to be said that the building was necessary. And I guess that's the question. Do we feel that it's not necessary, but is, is not having the building a major practical difficulty? And I guess is, is what we're talking about. So, <clears throat> and it, it's not a bad use, and it, it's not a it's not an intensive use. It is not going to be that much of a problem for the neighbor, but it is. It is again, you know, it is it is having that buffer. Cutting in half that buffer. Mm -hmm. But it's a substantial. Yeah, substantial. I, my whole thought is, and I respect that, as I'm learning and listening to you guys who've done this for a while, um, you know, every, every situation is a learning experience. But for me, this one is, <coughs> it's not going, I don't see it as significantly impacting the neighbor and the, due to the nature of the business. I could see if, it, if there was going to be more traffic or something like that. Uh, but that's that's my own feeling. I, I I understand where you guys are at. Absolutely, yeah. mm -hmm. the whole the whole object here is that we need to weigh. I mean, if there are any variances, you can. We have a lot of leeway. We can weigh the, the detriment to the to the community versus the benefit. So that's what we have to decide. Very easy. <laughs> I don't think it's <clears throat> Any further discussion? Would you pull the board, please? Mr. Yes. Mr. Henry? No. Mr. Jones? No. Mr. Simmons? No. Mr. Jones? No. So the, uh, no, the uh, request is not approved. Thank you for your input, Mr. Ed and Bill, and your patience with us. Okay, thanks. Have a great night. Okay, you too. Well, I think you made some very good points, uh, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate that. I agree. I, uh, sometimes I need to be directed, sometimes I will get a cup of coffee. That's a hard one. I wonder if there's any way to do just something like that. You could. You could pull an extra two bays on each one of them in existing buildings, still moving the setbacks and actually hit the same 5,000 feet. I, I, think the, I think the issue, though, is those, those buildings are, are prefab. Yeah, they're prefab. Yeah, they're and they're I think they're more expensive to have to custom modify more of those that will be for one prefab building. I think more pricey, but you can actually get a thousand feet built, right? Well, what, what, but what, what I what I I, uh, I give you credit for doing is you look at individual applications on their own merits. But not everything is you know universal or to be generally applied. This is a great But the other thing you can't get caught up on is you know, the ownership, because once those buildings are there, he can Nobody turn around and sell that. He can sell that tomorrow. Yes. So, Hello? Yeah. We're, we're, we're getting to you. Hold on. <laughs> we, we got a long way to do that. Yeah, we just had to pass that out. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. We resolved the appeal number 820. Um, the next is appeal number 830, which is a request of GAG Group LLC. Of 175 Broad Street, Lens Falls, New York, 2201, from the area parent to Chapter 149, Article 5, Section 149-59A, and Town Law 267B. Applicant is proposing to construct a 2,500 square foot storage facility on property owned by Rats Bay at 8 Dukes Way, Gainsworth, New York, 12831, that will not meet the uh, required site setback. Side yard setback in C1 General Commercial Zone District. This property is located at 9 point dash 2 dash 8.1 on the uh, town assessment map. Okay. Do we have somebody from uh, GAG Group? Yes, we have, I believe, uh, Michael Close, uh, Tim Barber, and uh, Mr. Richard. Can you tell us in some what you're doing? And, um, can, this is Tim Barber. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you for um, Good evening, gentlemen. Uh, what we proposed here is if you if you flip through the the, the blow up of the map, um, RASP has an existing outdoor storage area 
that's fenced in with eight foot uh, eight foot high chain link fence that has the uh, uh, the vision slots on it uh, to obscure the, uh, the what what they have stored in there. Originally, we had uh, hoped to uh, put this building in the back corner of the property uh, along that back fence line, and then realized that we were pretty much um, the setback. Um, so. <clears throat> After looking at it in discussion with, with, with the owners, we changed the configuration of the building and made it fit up towards the front, keeping, keeping uh, you know, 98% of it within the storage area and, and, only, and only going into the uh, setback area around you know, 16 feet, as you'll see on the, on the plan there. Um, so basically we tried to minimize any impact it would have on the um, on the uh, on the on the side yard setback. Well, this is uh, wholly within the M2 zone. Yes. So it's, it's viewed as an accessory building for the primary use, which is the manufacturing building at, uh, or the, in the offices that you see uh, in the aerial photograph there, the bright white rooftop light. Yeah, that's yeah. correct. I'm trying to locate this. Building in regards to the well, the ground is right here, and that's the fence line right here, right, right there. And that's the that's going to have the property on the side of the side of that line. Yes, yes. So we're, we're, we're not talking about the same. So it's not, yeah, it's not adjoining like a residential zone. It adjoins them two zones. <laughs> Yeah. And then to the uh, the north and east, you've got the uh, quarry. Yeah. So C3, you know, the C3, that was all C3, right? Switch them to Fredo? I think there's about, it switches over right about for that grain thing. Yes. That's where it switches over. Yeah. Gainesville, the same head. Okay, that's what I was going yeah. to just be honest. Yeah. I think it's, it's right about there, I think, is where it changes and then it goes down to almost the, the street there. Uh, I can get the map, but it extends a ways beyond this site yeah. in, in both directions. Yeah. So we're, the property you're impinging on is Craigsville. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 That would be the property that's above us. Yeah. And the other impression I got about this site is it's it's almost like a campus, yeah. if you will, you know, of, of built interrelated uses in buildings and buildings. Um, there we got a very nice, it's, it's, it's an it's, you know, industrial uh, property, but it's very, it's really kind of very nice. You, you never buy anything that doesn't work. You can bring you know, uh, the right? Thank you for yes. Yeah, that, that's where that, that one dugout building, yeah. I always thought that was neat. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> built a very interesting building. <laughs> yeah. I thought they were getting ready for the next bomb drop. <laughs> 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 anyway, so, so you're building this building that's basically a, a steel building, is that correct? That, yes, that's correct. It's a pre-engineered steel building. Okay. And it's going to sit on your parking lot. Exactly. Yes, it's going to sit in uh, the the entire the entire inside area of the uh, existing fence storage area is, is a crusher run. Um, um, there's six or eight inches of crusher run in that whole uh, in that area currently. Okay. So there'll, there'll be no increase in impervious area even because um, uh, we we do you know uh, gravel as, as impervious impervious surface. So. So there's no right. sweat for erosion control or anything like that. <clears throat> does, does this require a planning board? Yes. Okay. And, and the applicant's aware of that. Yes. Explain to the relationship building between JAG and RAT. It says that the JAG's LLC is applying to build a building on a property owned by RAT. Is this a sublease kind of agreement or how, what's the condition of this? I, 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 I couldn't I couldn't understand what you said, sorry. Oh, sorry, I was just asking for a little bit of an explanation on the, uh, the ownership and the lease agreements. Uh, the way the deal is written is that the JAG Group LLC would like to build a storage facility on RASP property. So I'm just curious what the relationship oh. between JAG and RASP is. Who's owning no, the, the JAG, is, uh, JAG is a design builder. We're an industrial builder. Well, we're hired by the client, which is RASP. Um, so there's that, that's the, the relationship between 
between us. We're the builder, they're the owner. I get it, yeah. You, you see that on the line every day. And, and my impression was in speaking with, with uh, Rich when he brought this in, or Tim when he brought this in, um, was that uh, the storage is part of it's going to facilitate the process in the building. There's, there's goods and materials that are used as part of their manufacturing process, and it, they're, they're going to be stored in this building. So there's a relationship, you know, between the two buildings. And that was the need for the, the location here. That's right. So we're basically going to take down that fence, move it up beyond. The way this drawing is blown up on this, I think we have the engineer on the phone. Is that just referring to a note, or is the general game plan going to take down the existing fence, put up the new building, and then reinstall the fence an additional 10 feet away to maintain that privacy? Or what's the fence going to look like when we're done here? The way the note is written, it's going to be so I don't know the blue shirt that was speaking. I can't, I can't hear. You're not planning on taking down the existing fence, are you? No, only in the, only in the area that the uh, that the building um, shoots out that one little corner there. Then then the fence will be reconnected to that corner, you know, as it as it is right there. And we're going to take out that the existing fence where the uh, where the front of the building meets right up close to it. Right, but you're going to leave all the rest of the fence as pre-existing. That's correct. Yes. That's correct. I was relying on the I saw. Yeah, but just the way that note was written, I know it was a note referring to the entire chain link, or was saying we're going to actually relocate this because it was drawn a little. Yeah, it's a little unorthodox. Yeah. It's a little unorthodox. Yeah. So it'll just be across the property there. Take almost 25 feet. So you will see the building then on the road. It won't be enclosed. You will see it from the road. You'll see that corner. You'll see that front face yeah. coming down. Now, although it is 100 feet from the road, don't get me wrong. It's a big oh, it's so, like, don't get me wrong. But it's really useful, I guess, at this point. Yeah. Can I just ask what the nature of the business is, Brad? Yes. Is control manufacturer? Or Rich? Ron. Go ahead, Ron. Oh, my bad. That's good. Rasp Incorporated, this is Ron Richards. Uh, Rasp Incorporated is an industrial controls manufacturer. So we build industrial control panels for other industries. They came before us before. They came before us to go into that building. That would just help But I do remember this. <laughs> okay, so you're, so you're manufacturing. Correct. Okay. Um, and then what you've got in this product in that storage area is your your product. Is that correct, or is it stone crushed stone? Mm -hmm. The I, current storage area could handle some of our end products that were able to handle the weather, um, but we would like to store some other products that are not so easily can handle the weather and we would like to store them in addition to current inventory. Makes sense, good, good, okay. Well, that, that helps to clarify for me anyways, and not that it's a big issue for me, but it's, you know, that, that is a hardship to be able to have, to not be able to store things inside. Right. The business is doing well, I'm, I'm assuming they need a little more storage. But. Yeah, makes sense. <clears throat> Correct. That's a good thing. We, we're happy to hear that. Yes, exactly. Absolutely. That's a, that's a good hardship to have. Um, the Cranesville quarry is not expanding beyond into that area, is it? No, they, they, and they couldn't. They're, they're subject to a DC permit as to uh, you know, their mining permit. So they're they're really? monitored each year by DEC in terms of you know, where they're excavating, and, and they, ha they have to file a long term plan. Uh, not only for their excavation plan, but for remediation as well. Quite a ways away from the quarry, anyways. From the area. Now the, uh, the person who was in with the um, uh, the brewery there, she was not particularly happy with the quarry. Right. <laughs> yeah, she was kind of they were kind of getting close to her. Depends on what kind of business you want. Right. <laughs> um, 
Do we have anything from the public? No, there was no, we were properly noticed. Uh, we get, got no written correspondence and I see no one on the participant list. So, I will open the public hearing and close the public hearing. We don't have any, uh, so any other comments from the board? Yes. Um, yeah, I mean, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the detail number 830 and that we provide the, uh, the 16 foot relief required and allow them to build to the 24 feet to the eve of the building. And can we incorporate the, uh, the, fi the findings from the uh, staff report to that motion? Yes, so you can recommend that at the... In terms of the area management requirements. That would be the pending site plan approval too, or...? This will require site plan. Yeah, yeah, as a matter of fact, their intention is to apply at the for the August meeting of the planning board. I don't have any thoughts on the planning board. No, I don't have any thoughts. I think it's pretty tough do we have a second? Yes. Okay. Any further discussion? No. Could you put the board, please? Yes. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you, board. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good evening. Thank you. Have a good evening, everybody. Thank you, board. Yep, uh, Charlene, you're you're free to come pick them up. Two months in a row, it's Yeah, that's amazing. Uh, I'll make a motion to adjourn the meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Make sure Tracy's at me in this first. The next time I'll be sure.